fellow leg addicts, I hope you're all doing super well today. As you can tell by the setup, this is a slightly different video than usual. Mostly because, as some of you know, I bought a huge lot of vintage Harry Potter Lego and I was super lucky to find out that that included some of the, well, all of the original Goblet of Fire sets that came out in 2005. As we all know, these sets are some of the rarer ones. As a child, I used to own the Durmstrang ship, but it's towards the end of my love for Lego Harry Potter. After that, I kind of became more of a teenager and started to move away from the Harry Potter Lego. The reason it's so interesting to look at these set is because two of these four have been remade, but all of these currently hold incredible value, at least for a Harry Potter set. Now, I am totally aware that if you are a Star Wars Lego collector, there is sets out there that go for absolutely eye-watering amounts. So considering these prices and these sets, I thought it'd be really interesting to look at them, maybe discuss them and kind of figure out why they have that value and if the, if it's worth it, do we think that these things should hold that value? First and foremost, talk about this amazing ship that I probably should move slightly more forward so you can actually see it better. There we go. But it's gonna like possibly decapitate me this way. It looks like it can be my microphone, like this. Hello, thank you for joining the show. So this is 4768, the Durmstrang ship. It's a very, very iconic Lego set, I think, if you're a Harry Potter collector. Now this ship, and I'm going to be talking in pounds because I'm in the UK, so that's kind of just the most relevant to me. This ship used to retail for 40 pounds um, back in 2005. I think it was on the shelf for like nine months. So nine months on the shelves isn't actually that long. That seems a really limited time for like quite iconic sets. Not only is it a really interesting set looks wise because like there is no other ships in the Harry Potter franchise but it also has very interesting colour scheme, um, interesting minifigures and it's just really different to most of the other Harry Potter sets. Now as I said this used to retail for £40. Obviously that is in 2005 and inflation would have made it more expensive now anyway however the value of this use currently is about £128. The value of this new is an eye-watering £215. That would be new in box. That is a different version of the ship that came with some random other minifigures. I think that was a Target exclusive. I think that is currently is valued at 255 new, but I'm just talking about the one with the two minifigures for the sake of this video. I have to admit, the design holds up more than I thought it was going to, especially bearing in mind this is a 2005 set. I think this comment kind of goes for pretty much all these sets, but it's really fascinating. I've, I've had the pleasure of building sets from 2001 all the way to 2005 within the vintage Harry Potter collection I bought, and it's fantastic to kind of see the progress Lego went through. The differences between the 2001 and 2002, like Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets sets, compared to even the Prisoner of Azkaban sets, is huge, and you definitely can tell that colour became more important to Lego in this wave. Whereas with like for example the Shrieking Shack there was still some random colour which kind of still feels quite old school Lego. I really just feel like it's coming closer to sort of more modern Lego where they're definitely purposely thinking about the colours in the set. I have to be honest I don't exactly know how Lego worked with the film studio at the time because generally these waves came out at the same time as the movie so I don't know how much they knew of how things were going to look but obviously in this wave you can definitely tell that they knew at least some of what it would look like because there is like the horn tail and this people set are definitely very obvious references to what things look like in the movie whereas in 2001 2002 things are still very, very just completely separate from the movie, like it's not at all accurate or trying to be accurate. And then with 2004, the Prisoner of Azkaban wave, they are trying to get closer to the movie book, but it still doesn't feel entirely like they cared as much as in this wave, like it's definitely coming closer to the movie. So this set comes apart slightly, you can open this one, um, you have to take the mask off, which I think is very interesting that you have to do that in order to go inside. This opens up, there's like some detail inside, like a scroll, some books, which is interesting because that that didn't need to be there, but it really shows that Lego was thinking about like more details, but also the colours that they use for those interior details are in line with the set, which is different to, for example, and I'm gonna keep comparing it to this, the Shrieking Shack, where the colours of the interior details seem to, be, seem to be a bit of an afterthought of like, oh, we have a lot of that part, we can just like make a table in there, like, because we have extras. Here, the colour design is definitely much more deliberate. And then you can open up this bit here as well, and then you can look into the hole down there. This all comes off, and it's actually really interesting to see that there's some modular design here, which 
it's the first time I think that things are modular. I wish the Shrieking Shack was modular. So that's a really nice modern design that kind of really adds to the play features of this set. I have to say though, as a general children's play set, this is quite delicate. Things aren't that well secured. Like I do always keep knocking this. Like this is quite, this is actually not that secure. Like this is definitely a set that isn't the easiest to hold together because you could just knock like a tiny bit of it and things will move. However, it is a really beautiful set. The blue and the red just makes it look really fantastic. This is possibly one of my favorite sets and definitely was one that I really wanted to sort of have the experience of rebuilding because as I used to have this, there's obviously some sort of nostalgic attachment to it. Now onto the next set, which is one that has been remade recently by Lego. This is the Graveyard Jewel. So it's really awesome to see this set and actually compare it to the new one. And I have to say, my first impression of this set when building it is, wow, this is really dark. Actually for Lego, especially nowadays, I don't know. I, it felt like the darker set that I built. You have four separate grave builds that all have play features. There is bats, there's skeletons. Like they really went for this. That's even a carriage with a coffin on top. So they really went for this graveyard theme. Like they definitely went hard. So the set number for that one is 4766 and it would have retailed for £30 back in 2005. I feel like the new Rise of Voldemort set is obviously one diorama and that's really well thought about. This is really bitty and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, I'm just saying it does feel really bitty. Also, it's chuck full of play features, like pretty much every grave opens, there is like a skeleton or something. Um, there's even like what I think is like a mu mausoleum. I think this is just like a tomb, but I thought this was a really cool building because there's actually snakes underneath the plate in the middle because it's like a, it's like a two level building, which it didn't need to be, but it's a really interesting detail because I think if you bury somebody, when like if it's like a family grave, the moment that like a new person dies, they'll put the bones of the one above it into like the burial thing at the bottom and then put the new coffin in. So it's actually really interesting that that detail exists in this Lego set, which is kind of why I'm saying that it feels quite dark for Lego because it's it's quite specific and they tend to always have a problem with that. That's literally the reason that they don't want to do Deathly Hallows or allegedly anyway. I also know that some people are really nostalgic for the set if they had this as a child, and I have to say. The minifigures in this are great. Um, the Durmstrang minifigures are not as, like, don't hold up that well. Apart from Victor Crumb's face, I feel everything else is a little bit mad. There's only two minifigures, which are such a big set. Actually, this one comes with four. It has, like, Lucius Malfoy with, like, both the mask and unmasked face. There's Glow in the Dark Voldemort, Harry, Wormtail, who has, like, hugely improved since, like, the Wormtail from the Shrieking Shack. And it's it's actually quite a nice set. I think this is possibly the one that holds up the most that you could actually now use to just make like a graveyard mock in your city. Now, I think mostly because there's a really good minifigure selection in this set, this now goes for, and I've written it down because I was like, oh, this needs to be shared. So this now goes for used for 125 pounds and new for like 252, which is essentially more than the Durmstrang ship. And I do really think that that value is coming from the minifigures. We all know, most of you, if you're into Harry Potter, you probably would have seen Potter Minifig Pals video about like the most expensive minifigures and glow in a dark Voldemort head was definitely on that list. So he's in this set, which is I think why the value of the set is so high. It does come with stickers, which is I think a really important thing to note if you're buying this. If you're buying this used, make sure the sticker's in good condition because that's the first thing that will deteriorate. The one that I have is in quite good condition but some corners have started to peel off slightly. Um, not a huge issue, not something you can really see when it's built due to the way where the stickers are, but it's really something you should be aware of when buying this. The next set that we have in this whole four set scenario is Harry and the Hungarian Horntail. And again, super familiar to us all because they obviously redone this recently. And that's what makes this so fun because you can kind of draw parallels between them. So this used to also retail for 30 pounds, which again is fantastic because the Horntail set recently also retail for £30 and actually had way less bricks. So as much as I'm not wanting to criticise Lego necessarily, inflation is a thing. It's really interesting to be able to see that between that set and the current one, both at a £30 mark, but this definitely had more stuff in it. But £30 in 2005 also was slightly more compared to £30 to us now. I think that's always really interesting to bear in mind. So this set, Obviously, it's very important to a lot of people. This has the not brick build horn tail, and it is glorious. Um, I have to say, when I found this in the bulk loft, I got really excited. Like, he is... 
he is marvellous, he is glorious, he deserves all the praise that he gets and he is definitely the reason this set costs a lot. This set also has the unique Moody minifigure, he didn't come in any other set. So this is the only Mad-Eye Moody minifigure that we had before um, the Mad-Eye Moody of the Harry Potter collectible minifigures series 1. So this is definitely a, like a really unique minifigure and also one that is worth quite a lot of money. And again, this really focuses on play features, so like the rocks can be made into arena if you want to, the tribunal or the tribune or however you want to say it in English falls over and your minifigures will fall off and it's fun and amazing. There are some unique printed tiles there for both the Darmstrang, D um, Bow Battle and Hogwarts logos, which are fantastic. And I can't, like, basically, if you've seen me build this life, you will know that there's a really fun magnetic golden egg bowl that Harry has, like, a little thing that he holds and he can scoop up the bowl or, sl or slash egg, but it's a bowl in the set. We all know that it's meant to be the egg. Um, he can scoop it up with the magnetic thing, and I think that's so genius. So this set used to retail as, as 30 as I said. However, if you were to want to buy it now, it used, it goes for about 120 and new it goes for about 155 as well, so not the cheapest. I think it's really interesting that this is the same price new and sealed as the graveyard set is because this doesn't have stickers, so in a used set you don't have as much issue with the stickers being in bad quality, whereas with that one that's definitely a risk you're taking if you're not buying the graveyard set new. But both these two sets currently go for about the same price, new, sealed and box. Again, I do think that's because of the really unique Dragon and Moody, and also here with the Voldemort that I've always spoken about. So there is a reason both of these have fantastic lineups of minifigures, and uh, the Hauntill is awesome. He wins. Brick build Hauntill can can just go sit in a corner and feel ashamed because he's just nowhere near as cool. I'm sorry. This one, champion any day. And then onto the very last set of this wave, and the cheapest one at the time, the £15 Rescue from the Mer People set. This set, I, I don't know, I've loved. I never owned this one as a child, but I used to look at this in a book and really love it because it's blue and green. Nothing in Harry Potter is blue and green. It's such a random set. Also, it has five minifigures. This set used to retail for £15 and it had more minifigures than all the other ones. Like, how crazy is that? It has the Mer person, it has Harry, Ron and Hermione, and Victor Crumb with shark head. So Victor Crumb with shark head also has some actual hair that he can put on. Hermione and Ron have dual printed faces, so they don't always have to be asleep, but they have the unique, like, sleepy faces. You've got Harry with gills or without gills, again, dual printed face, unique torso, um, and you've got the Mer person who is looking awesome. Uh, I really like her design, I think it's fantastic. Her hair is maybe a bit too flat compared to what it would have been in the movies, but genuinely I really, really like this set. Um, it's it's fantastic. I've also realised that the way that I've put Crumb in this set currently looks like the crab is pinching his bum cheeks. Great. There we have it, this is such a unique set. There are some play features again, like I can press this at the back, I think that's a fantastic play feature. Harry has slippers, there's even a little boat which is slightly inconvenient to like display with it because technically it would have been like in this like above the set somewhere but no um it comes with a little boat deal with it this set overall i think is really fantastic it was 15 pounds that's so so little and there was five minifigures i can't get over that and for that reason i think this now used is about 85 pounds and new in box goes for about 130 this again is very likely due to the minifigures. They are quite, they are quite unique. And though other pieces now exist, so you can recreate a crumb shark head. This shark head is definitely of its time. I think holds up pretty well, even though it doesn't have any printing on it. So overall, I just really wanted to chat about these sets because I thought they are just some interesting ones to look at, especially considering what things are looking like nowadays. These sets actually still really hold up if you compare them to like the modern versions of Lego. And the minifigures make these sets super worth it because they also have the skin color again, which they started doing from the 2004 wave. Though I totally understand that people do not want to buy these because they cost so much money nowadays. Cool, that's kind of all I wanted to discuss for today. I just really wanted to have a little video about the Goblet of Fire sets and really look at them in a bit more detail because I like looking at things in more detail and I know not everybody has a chance to look at these. So um, I hope you find this informative. Let me know if you had these as a kid and if you did, like, did you like them? What were your what were your opinions on them? And what was your favorite Harry Potter vintage set? Those are my little ramblings about these sets. Thank you so very much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.
subscribe if you'd like to support this channel that would be so very much appreciated there is a join button down below and you can see all the different perks we have a lovely discord where we get to chat to each other and trade and all that sort of stuff have a fantastic rest of your day guys and i'll see you all very soon goodbye Hello. Where you? Oh yeah, Harry Potter said.